Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about zinc finger nucleases, and that is something we can use to edit the genome by cleaving sections of the DNA. So first we'll talk about these restriction endonucleases. And those are basically an enzyme that can cut DNA at a specific nucleotide sequence. So in the E. coli organism, we have a restriction endonuclease called ECOR1, and that is targeting a specific section of DNA or a recognition site. And in this case, it's two amino acids or six base pairs of GAATTC. And E. coli does this to prevent random cleavages in its DNA that could otherwise be lethal by removing this site. So like ECOR1, our zinc finger nucleases can target these specific recognition sites. Um, however, the only difference is these sites we can now customize to a specific nucleotide sequence that the user desires. So what exactly is a zinc finger? And here I've outlined them in these different colored ovals. So these are proteins that are held together by a zinc ion, hence the name zinc finger, and they usually work together. So one zinc finger here, if we look at the red one, is targeting one amino acid. So here it is ATG, and then the blue one is targeting ATC, and the purple GAG. And then these zinc fingers usually are, they usually pair or work together in groups of two to three, also bind to an enzyme called FOC1. And this you can imagine as like a pair of scissors. It's a DNA cleavage domain. And so if we have two groups of this sequence here, then we're able to make a cut right here by heterodimerizing these two cleavage enzymes. And so to remove an entire sequence, like the one I've outlined in red, we need to make a cut here and another cut here. And that is why it's required that we have four of these groups of zinc fingers and FOC1 to do that. And that would be a minimum of eight zinc fingers or usually a maximum of 12 like I've done here. And so we can bring these zinc fingers into the cell by transfection, which is deliberately introducing nucleic acids, or electroporation, which is using a pulse of electricity to open the cell membrane. And then once they bind, we can make these cuts and remove this section of DNA. So by removing that, that would be a deletion mutation. And then we could insert a new section of DNA with homologous pairs, which would be an insertion mutation. Now, there is an error because a certain percentage of cells can be misrepaired and then result in deletion mutation again, which is part of the risks of zinc fingers. Um, however, we don't usually have frame shift mutations from errors in zinc fingers because we are working with the amino acids themselves and not the individual base pairs. So for example, here, if we go to remove these two proteins here from the sequence, like that, we do not affect these proteins here. Now, if we insert a new section in as well, as long as that is inserted in groups of three bases or codons themselves, then there is not a frame shift mutation. Now, what's good about this is that these mutations made by zinc finger nucleases are permanent and they're heritable. And we can do that through a single transfection. And then they can also knock out genes that are not amendable to RNA interference. Now, there are some risks and that is an off-target effect. What happens if our zinc fingers here bind to the wrong section of DNA? Then we will create a deletion mutation that is not intended by the user. 
Now, the best known therapy of zinc finger nuclease is an HIV treatment. So the HIV virus will infect cells through this co-receptor called CCR5. And then it can proceed to disable the immune system by destroying CD4 plus and T cells. So by using these zinc finger nucleases, we can target the CCR5 gene and we can remove it. And many people can live a normal life without the CCR5 gene. I think it's something like 20% of the population doesn't have it naturally. But with zinc finger nuclease, we could remove it manually and that would prevent the HIV virus from entering the cells. And it has been shown in some preliminary experiments that this has effectively repressed the expression of CCR5. Now, the only thing left is our ethical and legal implications of using a gene editing technology, and in this case, zinc finger nuclease. So like any other medical treatment, it would be the consent of the patient that's required to do something like this. And if the patient is an embryo, then the issue of consent um, is no longer there, really. So it, it, what is the best interest of the patient? And that must be what is kept in mind. So using this uh, or other gene editing technologies to make these sort of gene edited super babies is definitely a real concern. And then there's also people that um, are concerned about just preserving the natural development of human beings and not messing with our DNA or our blueprints. So that's it for zinc finger nuclease. I hope you enjoyed this video.